Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and today we're going to be implementing a queue using JavaScript, okay? Now, I just want to say first off, uh, you probably don't need today's video to actually use a queue in JavaScript. You can probably just use the built-in array, in particular the push and shift methods, okay? But if you do want a more structured, strict queue, you can follow today's video to of course make that happen or if you just want to learn something, today's video might be the one for you. Okay, now I also want to say I'm going to be using Node.js for this example and that also comes along with a package.json with a type of module. So I'm going to be using the type of module right here so I can take advantage of uh, the native import export syntax as part of ES6 um, and that right there is just something you can follow if you're also using Node.js, but back to the actual queue. So, for those of you who don't know, a queue is basically just a first in first out data structure, which means the first item you put into the queue is going to be the first one that gets out of the queue. Okay, so this can relate to, for example, a shopping center line. If you are going to, you know, check out your items, if you get there first, you're going to be removed first, right? You're going to be served first. So. That is what a queue is. So now, let's go inside here. Let's make a new file inside my directory structure called queue.js, just like this. And this one here is going to be exporting a class called queue. So we're going to say export default class right here. We're going to be calling this class a queue. And if you're not too sure what this export default stuff is, I've got a whole video dedicated to that. I'll leave it in the top right of today's video. And the same goes for classes. But as a quick summary, uh, export default just means that when I import this QJS file from this file right here, when I import it, I'm going to be importing this class directly, of course, being the Q. Okay, now for the constructor of my Q, I'm going to go inside here and I'm going to simply just say this dot items is equal to a new empty array. So by default, we're going to be holding a reference to each one of our items inside the queue inside this array. And of course, it's going to begin as being empty. Okay, so now to actually add items to our queue, we're going to be using the NQ or the ENQ method. Okay, so we're going to say ENQ just like this. It's going to be taking through an item. Also, my apologies if I pronounce this word incorrectly. I've only seen it written. I've never actually seen it being, you know, said before. So anyway, um, right here we can add an item to our items array right here. So as we can see, we're using the built-in array as our way of holding each one of our items. So we're going to be simply calling the array push method. We're going to say this dot items dot push, then pass through here the item right there. And that is basically all there is to it. Okay, so that is our first method to add an item to a queue or to the queue. The next one's going to be to remove an item or actually take off, um, you know, uh, the, the bottom most item. So for this one, we can just say DQ. And then we can just essentially just return uh, the very last item inside this array or the very first one. So we're going to say this dot items dot shift right here, but we need to actually return this value. So we're going to say return. And what this shift method does is basically it just takes the first item off the array and returns it. So it actually alters the length of the array. If you have, for example, you know, apple and then banana inside here, if you call shift on this array, it's going to remove apple and leave you with banana. And of course, actually give you apple as the return value. Okay, so we're going to see how this works once we actually test our queue. And the rest of these are going to be quite straightforward. So the next one is going to be called peak. And this one here is just going to show you or just return the first item without removing it from the actual item list. So basically, it's very similar to the DQ, but it's not going to remove it once it has been returned. So for this one, we can just say return this dot items at index zero, the first item right there. Now, if there is no items in your array, this right here is going to give you undefined. So um, you should be good to go from that standpoint. If you want to, you can probably put a little if statement inside here and say, you know, for example, if the item length is, you know, zero, then 
you know, throw an error or return null explicitly, it's up to you. But for this one, I'm going to keep it as this right here. And the last two methods, one of them is going to be called get size, quite straightforward, returning this.items.length. And then lastly, we've also got is empty right here, returning this.getSize is equal to zero. So of course, if the size is zero, then of course it is empty. And that is your last method right there. So as we can see, it is fairly simple and straightforward. And we are simply just wrapping around the built-in array. So going inside the index.js, let's import this queue for usage. So we're going to say import queue from then dot forward slash q dot js right here. So now if I go down here, we can make a new queue and we're going to be storing some car makes inside there. Okay, so we're going to say const my queue or let's, you know, what, let's call this cars uh, equal to a new queue right there. So now we can say, for example, cars dot nq or on queue, whatever you call it, right? I'm going to pass through here, for example, Honda. Then do the same thing. We can pass through, for example, Toyota. And lastly, we can pass through Mazda. Okay. So now go down here. I'm going to say console.log. I'm going to pass through the actual cars. So we're going to be logging out the results of the actual queue. So inside the terminal, we can now just say node index.js. And we can see right here, we have each one of our items inside our internal items array. So now, if I go down here, I can then say cars.dq. Then I'm going to simply log out the results of the cars after we've actually dequeued the first item. Save this and run it again. And we can see we get Honda from the top of the array. Then, of course, left with Toyota and Mazda. And that, of course, is the results of our shift method right here. We can also say cars.peak. Let's look at the first item in the array. Save this, run it again, and we get Honda for the first one, then of course Toyota for the second peak. So that right there is your queue implementation in JavaScript. Now, you're probably wondering what's the point of all this when I've got an actual array? Well, if you look at this, right, cars, you can't actually access the array on its own. Okay, so obviously you can by doing this, but you know, if you're the developer of this, you probably should, you know, just sort of be wary that you want to be using the instance methods as opposed to, you know, this private or this, you know, fake private uh, instance property right here. Of course, you can hide it if you want to, but for the most part, you know, you've got these public methods which you can use, uh, you know, in order to protect the items from being accessed directly, and it gives you a much more strict and structured way of storing your data. So there you go. That is a queue in JavaScript. If you liked today's video, drop a like and subscribe to Decode. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.